morning. This is welcome to Opokuari School. This is an e learning virtual class. My name is Samuel Bafujan. You can call me Hunter. Um, today's lesson is for Form 2 Visual. And um, the topic is Ala Prima painting and then direct painting. When we talk about a la prima painting, we are referring to or is the process of um, starting and finishing a painting in one sitting. So when you start and finish a painting in one sitting, you are practicing the a la prima painting technique. <laughs> now you heard the name a la prima, it sounds funny somehow because it's not an English word. A la prima is an Italian word which means at one attempt. Which means at one attempt. So um, that is just to tell you that this painting technique, you know, um, employed the use of, you know, um, dexterity in that whatever you do um, forms part of the finished work. There is no time for you to go back, erase and then do it again or to stop it and then do it another day. Um, with this technique, the moment you set up and then you sit down and start the painting, you don't stop. You continue till you finish. You continue till it is done. That is for a la prima painting. Now, why the need for the a la prima painting technique? A la prima helps to improve on your painting skills. It helps to be very confident when you are painting. And then it also helps you to execute more artworks. It helps you to execute more artworks. Because if you can sit down and then you start and finish a painting, imagine the number of paintings that you can do in a day if you are given 24 hours. So let's take for instance when you, you go on hiking, you see a very nice scene, um, then you might want to you know capture that scene. You know as artists we are photographers and cameras at the same time. We visualize, we conceptualize, and then we try to, you know, bring everything onto the support for which um, we execute works on. You see, normally artists see a 3D environment, and then we try to bring the 3D objects onto a two-dimensional surface. So again, that calls for skills and dexterity as well. Another major importance for you know employing the a la prima painting technique has to do with the fact that you get a lot of money when you go to a beach, and then you get customers who will like you to give them some nice flowers, some nice scenes. Or portrait of themselves you can make money you can make a good deal of money from that because if the if you get three or four customers and then they you know opt for a portrait and you can start and finish each at one sitting then you are in for some great deal of money all right, now let's look at some of the objects that you can use the, this particular painting technique to execute. So things that we can draw include birds, trees, flowers, scenes like a village scene, a market scene, anything. And then we can also talk about a nice sunset or a seascape. So today, for today's lesson, we are going to 
or I am going to guide us to um, draw and then we paint as well and then we paint as well this helps to or this is going to help you to know exactly what we are talking about this is going to help us to know exactly what we are talking about what are some of the media that this painting technique can help us to execute some of the painting me media includes poster color oil paint acrylic paint gouache and then when we come to the dry painting media all right so um with the dry painting media that um, we are talking about crayons pastels pencil and then charcoal as well you can use all these media for the ala prima painting technique now without wasting much time i would like my cameraman to pan to the um, equipment as well as the tools and materials that we have then we know then you know exactly how to prepare before you start um, the a la prima painting technique now remember you can see um, direct um, direct painting too a la prima simply is a form of direct painting so a la prima and direct painting moves hand in hand all right so as you can see here everything is well prepared we have our paper that is our main support for the work then we also have the drawing board that will form a rigid background for us to be able to work on the paper and then we have the easel as painters you need to have your easel you just can't paint on a table you need to have your easel that is a professional way of painting so that you don't get any back paints. Then you will need the painter's trademark, that is the palette. Now, we all know the palette helps us to uh, mix colors during painting. And then this is the object that we are going to draw for today. This is the object that we are going to draw for today. So, remember, we are going to start and finish this work at one attempt or in one sitting so if you are ready you can join us as we execute this um, object using the a la prima painting technique so we have we also have our um the the medium that we are going to use for today is the acrylic paint then we also have our professional painting brushes too so without wasting much time i would like us to collect some colors and then we start First, need to um, prepare by studying the object, and then you study the colors that are, you study the colors that are present in the work that you are coming to execute. So this is all part of the preparation. You can observe that there is no pencil here yes I'm going to use the brush to start the painting so let's see we also need some black
All right, let's add some ochre. Okay, the bright yellow. All right. So um, there are two ways of approaching this. You can stand or you can sit. Whichever way that you, you are going to feel comfortable. So I am going to sit because I will be drawing with a brush before I paint. If you are too scared to use the brush to draw, you can use a um, pencil, but if you use the brush to draw, um, it's very easy, only that if you don't know, you might think it's difficult. So you have to try and capture the object impression So this is what we call blocking. You want to have, you know, an idea how the whole thing is going to look like before you even start adding details. So we are blocking. The blocking is going to help us to get to know where each part is going to fit. Then we can start the detail. Now, there is, um, it is 
it's very important to give a sensation or uh, an illusion um, to the object for the viewer to know that the object is not hanging but it is resting on something so you can just bring some two lines to show that the object is not hanging it is and then this same thing will separate the foreground from the background so before we start i would like us to just work on the background so when we are done then we move on to the actual object so if you want to for our primary remember we are racing against time so you need a bigger brush for your background you need a bigger brush for your background so for our background i would like us to wash some reds i would like us to wash some reds See, the advantage of having a bigger brush is that it helps you to cover a large area within a short time. Don't worry if you don't or uh, it gets into the work because you work, you take the actual object, you do the detailing separately. So don't be too careful when you are working on the background you have to allow or give room for accidentals accidentals helps the work to be very interesting how to give room for accidentals all right so we have our foreground uh, let's choose a different Let's choose a different color for our background. Now we have the foreground. Let's choose a different color for our background. background we want the actual work to stand out so we can use um, green for the background so that to give that floral and leafy sensation to the whole thing how nice see so within a short time we have our background yes that is what I'm talking about so if you have a bigger brush it helps you to work very fast it helps you to work very fast all right so we have our background and then let me just bring some yellow here to create a wild sensation okay now we are coming to do the detailing of the actual object so as you can see the the vase itself that houses the that houses the flowers is 
pure red but the fact that it is pure red doesn't mean you have to just apply red like that when you do it like that the work will be funny so you have to mix the red with some um, black so that it makes the work you know more realistic in painting remember you don't apply colors in the raw state when you do that it becomes the work becomes more graphical but we don't want graphical works too this is painting this is not graphics so as you can see we are working gradually on the objects I told you that the fact that the object you see there is red doesn't mean you have to just apply red in this raw state. That is not how to paint. Though you will see the thing red as red, but there are shadows playing on the object. So because of that, you will have to you know add some colors. To the red to tone the whole thing down to tone the whole thing down a bit you can see that the painting is coming out i hope you can see it all right that's fine So the fact that you are doing a la crema doesn't mean that you have to also, you know, um, rush with everything. You just have to make sure that you know exactly what you are about. In that case, you won't make mistakes. Because if you rush and then you make a mistake, correcting the mistake is much more difficult than, you know, and it will waste precious time so there must be no room for errors there must be no room for errors all right so the object has um, shadow so let's try to there is a shadow cast on the just right beneath the object so let's try to bring that shadow when you bring shadows it makes the object look very real then you can feel it that the object is not hungry but it is sitting or resting on something shadows to as it keeps receding then you can blend it with the background and blend the shadow with the background something like this right okay so let's move on now just right above the vase to make the work look very interesting you have to watch the interplay of light on it how light plays on the object when you do that then you will know how to apply 
setting colors see that right on top of that line is a dark area but before the dark area there is what we call the reflected light and the reflected light too i will teach you how to execute that So you see that light line that I've left. So what you do is that you mix your white and red. And then you gently Let's see, you can see some interplay of light here. So you bring that. And then um, there is some reflected light to here. Bring that and you turn it down. Alright, let's continue. So can see that the object is um, where for the part that we've reached it looks like a glass and um, executing a glass is very easy you just have to employ um, what we call um, wash when you lay washes it will come so easy when you lay washes it will come so easy Join it, friend. And see that gradually the whole thing is coming out. The other is painting. For painting. You just have to know what you are about. If you know what you are about, few strokes will just bring out whatever thing that you are doing. You just need few strokes. You don't need too many. How many minutes gone? 30. Alright.
the liquid level. Let's use some few strokes to bring out that liquid level or the content in it. And we we'll wash the rest. Wash. Okay, we will get to the um, bouquet of flowers very soon. We are almost done with the vase. Sometimes when you add, when you give room for accidentals, it makes your work even much more interesting. You don't have to worry yourself so much in, you know, trying to bring every detail. Sometimes you have to just give room for accidentals. So as you keep working like this, you can just um, come back and watch what you are doing. If it's okay, then you continue. There is something in it. You don't necessarily have to do everything. Sometimes you just create something and then the eye will just <laughs> add it to you. So I, I can see something in it, but I'll just create something small and then you just blend it. Just blend it together. You don't necessarily have to, you know, create everything. Just create something small, and then you wash it. You wash it away. You wash it like that. And then the eye will do the rest for you. It's not everything that you have to add details, all details. Sometimes the eye does the whole trick for you. So you can see some greens in it. So for the greens, we can just bring the greens, then the eye will just do the rest for us. You can see some greens, the eye will do the rest for us. And when you have it like this, then that's okay. Alright, so we are moving on, we are moving on to the, um, the part that will make our work even much more interesting. So let's start with this one. Because of time, I'll move very fast.
I told you. It's not all the time that you have to do exactly what you see, but sometimes when you create something to represent something, to just look like what is there. Remember, this is a la crema. You don't have to waste all the time on it. You don't have to waste all the time on it. You don't have the whole deal for yourself. So you have to just work very fast. You know, if you always know what you are about, you will need a few strokes. A few strokes will do the trick for you. You wouldn't have to worry yourself so much. Huh? trying to use the technique of washing to bring out the work coming out with some few strokes I won't go exactly what we have there but the work will be interesting Hope you are enjoying it. Yes, sir. All right, that's fine. If you are enjoying, if you are enjoying it, it makes me happy too. <laughs> very interesting for well, art you can just as you as you keep chatting with friends you know you keep chatting with them but you can just combine it I for one if I have my easel with me as you keep chatting with me I'll be chatting with you all right but I'll be working I'll be working and whatever I'm doing I can sell it if I sell it, I'll make my cool cities. Okay. So our work is coming gradually. The work is coming out gradually. I told you, because of time, I won't do exactly what is there, but I will create some impression that will be nice as well. Alright, it's coming.
20 minutes long. This is a la prima painting. You start the painting, you don't leave it and go to town, but you finish the painting before, before you do any other thing. Finish the painting before you do any other thing. We are getting there. Let's go to this part. <laughs> of time. I wouldn't like to waste time to do more detailing. I would like to create some of the foliage so that the work will be nice. But
All right, so roughly this is um, our prima painting. When you, when you are done, you have to add your autograph to sign out or sign off that the painting is done. So, um, this is a la prima painting. So, I'm done with it. Um, roughly took about 50 minutes or so. That is a la prima painting. Um, I will see you again and then please endeavor to try your hands um, on more works to gain perfection. Thank you. I am Hunter. Bye bye.